Hello and welcome to the official Wrestle News 365 YouTube channel. Thank you very, very much for joining us on here today. This is your WWE NXT review for the November 20, 2019 edition of WWE NXT. As always, this week, WWE NXT emanated from Winter Park, Florida at Full Sail University, the home of NXT for several years now, for yet another live two-hour episode on the USA Network. So, how do our reviews work? Well, to give you a little breakdown, we'll break down every segment of the show. I'll give you my thoughts on tonight's proceedings, and we'll also see what you, our great followers, all thought of tonight's episode. At the end of every episode of WWE NXT, we send out a Twitter post on our official Twitter account, at 365Wrestle, asking our followers to describe WWE NXT in three words. At the end of this review, we'll take a look at some of your responses and pick out some of my favourites, both positive and negative, and check out your opinions on the show. So make sure you stay till the end of the video to see if you made the list, as Chris Jericho would say. We open the show with NXT General Manager William Regal waiting by the door that Triple H had promised to leave open Monday night on Raw. Triple H ended Monday night by saying heading into Survivor Series due to NXT invading Raw and SmackDown several times that he would leave the door open for any WWE Raw or SmackDown superstar to arrive at NXT on Wednesday. So, who walked through the door? We see none other than Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch walk through. Nice to have you back, William Regal says. Becky Lynch then enters the NXT arena and makes her way to the ring. There were some boos uh, initially, but the majority give the man uh, Becky chance and seemed relatively pleased to have her back on NXT television and in the NXT arena. Um, I think deep down even the people that were booing her were... Glad to get her back. They obviously, when they purchased their tickets for this show of NXT, they didn't expect to see uh, who is the face of the WWE Women's Division at the time. So they must have been happy with that. It's been a while, Becky says, but you won't have to wait much longer. She said, regardless of Triple H's invitation on Raw, she was going to come back anyway. She says that Sasha Banks is holding Bailey back on SmackDown and calls her a blue haired Bailey buddy. Crowd chants, Shayna is going to kill you at Becky Lynch. But Becky responds to that and says she's not going to hide. She's on Shayna's show under her lights and what's Shayna going to do about it? Calling Shayna out, apparently, to have a confrontation in the ring. But Shayna Baszler does not interrupt her. Rhea Ripley interrupts, which changes the chance of Shayna's going to kill you to Rhea's going to kill you. Rhea says, so you're the man. It would appear so. Not if you ask Ric Flair, even though he would try to trademark it a million times. Rhea says, if you're the man, let's see if you have a set of balls. Gets a ooh from the crowd, of course. There's nothing worse or gets a better reaction in WWE than talking about another person's testicles or calling him a bitch. That seems to be the go-to, doesn't it? And then we have a match. Out comes a referee and Becky Lynch and Rhea Ripley are going one-on-one. -on -one. Rhea hits an electric chair to Becky onto the apron. Becky and Rhea trade strikes in the ring. Rhea throws Becky off the top rope and they both trade strikes in the ring to boos and cheers. The classic boo on one punch and cheer on the other punch or yay on the other punch. Rhea hits top rope superplex onto Lynch with, uh, which receives chance of NXT from the crowd. The crowd were into it. But the match didn't get a finish, as you would expect, for two protected baby faces. Out comes Shayna Baszler and the NXT horsewoman to attack both Becky Lynch and Rhea Ripley. But Lynch fights them all off. She is a man, after all. Uh, Ripley and Lynch then take out uh, Jessamyn Duke and Mar Maria Shafia in the ring. And their match would be, appear to be a double DQ or a no contest or something like that. We then see the arrival of the revival didn't mean to rhyme there but just did it anyway you can have that for free they're escorted in the arena by security as they are smackdown superstars and they don't want to be jumped by nxt stars i thought this was a fun opener 
Um, it didn't give too much away, which was good. Um, the crowd was obviously into it. They weren't expecting to see Becky Lynch. And the full sale crowd are really into Rhea Ripley. And I think she more than held her own. Mostly basic off- offense. We didn't see anything too crazy. But I think that's a future big money feud right there between those two. Rhea Ripley obviously is incredibly young. And Becky Lynch still has several years in her. So once Rhea Ripley goes to either Raw or SmackDown, I think we have a good long-term f- uh, future program between those two. My only thing is I wouldn't sure I wouldn't be completely sure if Rhea Ripley's a babyface. I think she can be a big dominating heel. That's where her money is when she goes against someone like Becky Lynch. She has to play the heel role. She plays the power role. She's a very strong competitor, and I think that's where I think that's where her money would be and will be in the future. Obviously in NXT, she has to be a babyface because the top uh, female heel there is Shayna Baszler. And you have other top heels like Io Shirai and Bianca Belair. So it doesn't make any sense for her to be a heel at the moment. But I do think her money's there in the future, absolutely. Next, we have uh, Kona Reeves comes out. But before he can actually even get in the ring, he gets completely wiped out. By Ricochet, out of nowhere, completely out of the view of the camera. It was shot really, really well. It's funny that you we saw a similar thing on AEW Dynamite tonight um, with Darby Allen doing the same thing in the John Moxley match. They basically shoot the person making the entrance, in this case, Kona Reeves, and just out of nowhere, you see Ricochet with a huge drop kick. Actually, takes out uh, Kona Reeves. That's real superhero shit right there. Not coming out in weird tights and jumping around on Raw. That's real stuff. Uh, which follows, after that follows, Conan Reeves' original opponent would be Matt Riddle. So it would appear that we have Ricochet versus Matt Riddle in a dream match right now. Ricochet hits a tope somersault to the outside. The crowd would going absolutely nuts. This would be a recurring theme on any uh, Raw Smackdown star that the NXT crowd wasn't expecting to see. Uh, appeared on the show tonight. Uh, Ricochet goes for a standing shooting star press, but he's actually countered into a triangle choke and a cross arm breaker, um, which is a really creative spot, really fun spot. I really like spots that are so seamless like that, especially counters. Counters that are so seamless, they just they always get a great reaction, especially when they're inventive and people haven't seen them before like this. It was a really terrific spot. It's followed by the Broton by Riddle. You would we didn't actually see a pin attempt for the longest time in this match. Um, we got on eventually after an explosive suplex by Riddle, but that's where this goes back to my criticism of the Young Bucks, Bucks, and it's the same with sort of Ricochet sometimes. Obviously, the moves are great. Obviously, the spots are great. He's a super, super athlete. I mean, I'm here sat in my chair. I can't even basically do a, a forward roll, let alone him do a standing shoot and star press. However, this still is a simulated contest. This still is a simulated fight. Therefore, in a real fight, you'd be constantly going for the win. In UFC, you're constantly going for the win. In boxing, you're going for the win. In amateur wrestling, you're going for the pin all the time. Pin falls matter. Near falls matter. That's the simulated contest Contest in it all. Uh, then Riddle goes for the ripcord into a front chancery which is countered by Ricochet into a Northern Light Suplex and a spinning neck breaker. He didn't get all of it. Uh, slightly sloppy, but obviously Ricochet is significantly smaller than Riddle, so it's impressive enough he managed to pull it off at all. Um, and you can hardly call Ricochet sloppy, can you? I mean, some of the spots he does, um, <laughs> he messes up one neck breaker slightly. I mean, we're nitpicking here, really, aren't we? Ricochet uh, attempts a Phoenix Splash, but misses. Riddle then hits a final flash knee strike, uh, Riddle then hits his beautiful German uh, deadlift, German suplex, and absolutely dropped Ricochet on his head. It looked absolutely brutal. Suddenly, we see Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura come out wearing SmackDown shirts, but Riddle uh, uses their distraction to get a crucifix pinfall on Ricochet for the victory. After the match, Nakamura and Cesaro continue to, to attack Ricochet and Riddle. Ricochet then hits a springboard crossbody onto Cesaro, over the barricade and into the crowd. I mean, honestly, if you haven't seen that, go and see it. We're talking springboard in the ring, springboards onto the ropes, over the barricade, into the crowd, onto Cesaro. 
that's the benefit of appearing at a show like Full Sail, where it's so confined and so cramped. Obviously, you can't do that on a main roster show. WWE have got lawsuits to consider, but this this was a fun spot. This was a fun spot, and the crowd really did react to it. Shinsuke Nakamura then goes for the Kinshasa onto Riddle, but gets hit by a running knee. Uh, but gets hit by a running knee from who else but Roderick Strong. Riddle then hits Strong, but then Finn Balor comes out of nowhere and attacks Matt Riddle. Yeah, it was absolutely nuts stuff. It was person after person after person coming out that the crowd didn't expect. The crowd was going absolutely insane. There was turmoil everywhere. Uh, Balor then hits a double stomp to Matt Riddle. But Riddle turns the tide with a final flash to Balor. Uh, words can't describe this segment. I mean, what a segment it really was. It was absolute mayhem. It was overbooked, probably. You know, with the amount of people coming out, it was hard to keep your attention at one place. It was hard to tell a natural narrative story, apart from it was just chaos. Um, and regardless if it was overbooked, it played up the factor of the story that they were trying to tell, is that it was chaos and bedlam on the road to Survivor Series. You don't know who is going to appear next. When are they going to appear? Who's going to appear? Is it going to be Raw? Is it going to be SmackDown? Is it going to be NXT? Is it going to be War Games? It was certainly making last night's NXT must-see. And you didn't know what was going to happen. And that's the point. Especially nowadays on social media. All you need to see on social media. If you're watching Dynamite and someone popped up. Ricochet's here facing Matt Riddle. Cesaro showed up. And Shinsuke Nakamura showed up. And Finn Balor's attacking people. People are going to change the channel. Um, If they're that you know, lapsed fan, casual fan. Who's flipping between them anyway. That's going to make them stay also. We then see a package by Killian Dane, Pete Dunne and Damian Priest who will have a match this Saturday at NXT TakeOver Wargame. The winner will become the number one contender for the NXT Championship for a match against Adam Cole at Survivor Series. Uh, just a package here just to highlight that. I think it's almost been a bit of an afterthought, hasn't it, with um, the War Games matches and Survivor Series itself, the Raw vs SmackDown vs NXT Invasion. Um, but it's nice to have NXT actually represented in a championship match at Survivor Series. I think some people thought that Adam Cole may be in the 5-on-5-on-5 five on five on five male tag team elimination match, uh, but it's good that the NXT Championship is being treated the same as the WWE and Universal Championship in having their own singles match at Survivor Series. We then go on to see the match that was advertised for the show, the Revival, facing the NXT Tag Team Champions, Kylo Riley and Bobby Fish of the Undisputed Era. Both teams feel each other out to start the match. They trade spots and holds, uh, followed by some brawl in the ring. It was a slow start, but it built to a very, very strong finish. Scott Dawson goes for a suplex with both Dawson and Riley. Uh, O'Reilly falling out of the ring. There's a double suplex to Dash Wilder for a one count. The Undisputed Era then continued to work over Dash Wilder for the majority of the match, with the Revival appearing to be working as the babyface which did seem as a slightly surprising move and a strange move to me, considering if anyone's going to be a babyface in this match, obviously they're both heel tag teams, but if anyone's going to be the babyface, you would assume it would be the Undisputed Era, considering it is at Full Sail University in the NXT arena on an NXT show. Um, I'm guessing the higher-ups assume that with the Revival coming back, being the first ever two-time tag team champions, that they would be getting a babyface reaction. Um, but it, it, in the grand scheme, it, it didn't really matter. Um, Bobby Fish goes for the guillotine. Dash Wilder then falls out of the ring and is attacked by Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, they pay off, uh, they play off Wilder going uh, outside to the ring corner. Um, the Undisputed Era then hit Chasing the Dragon for a two count. Kyle O'Reilly drop kits Wilder to the outside, followed by a running knee from the apron on the outside. Dash Wilder then hits a power slam to Kyle O'Reilly, followed by a hurricane runner by Wilder for the hot tag to Scott Dawson. Dawson then hits a single leg drop kick to Bobby Fish, a running swinging neck breaker, followed by a diving headbutt. When I saw the, um, the diving headbutt, you don't see many people do it nowadays. Um, you definitely don't see many people do it regularly. Uh, it just, it makes me cringe seeing that move, knowing the uh, the damage that it does. I mean, you look at people like the Dynamite Kid, obviously, you look at people like Chris Benoit, Harley Race, Daniel Bryan, 
uh, it's known to cause concussions. Of course, it's going to cause concussions. You're diving with your head. Uh, I'm just surprised people still use it nowadays. It, it just maybe for the odd match, but then it brings up the conversation of oh, is the odd chair shot to the head? Um, good. It, it's just it just seems debatable to me. But like I said, well, as soon as I see it nowadays, I just find it. You just sort of cringe. You just go, oh, you know, it's a great move. I I love the move. You know, when people like Benoit and Dynamite used to do it from uh, their opponent would be three quarters of, across the uh, the ring, and you'd see them do it. And you, it's a spectacular move, but you just know that the damage that it causes just seems slightly, says sort of, sort of cringe worthy, just because of you know that the damage that it does. Kyle O'Reilly then hits a double knee attack on Dash Wilder on the outside. An axe kick and a forearm by O'Reilly to Dawson for a two count. Dawson is then surrounded by the Undisputed Era and they show there's really clever finish to the match here. You have in the ring Scott Dawson surrounded by the Undisputed Era and then you sort of see Dash Wilder struggling to make it to his feet on the outside and Scott Dawson sort of looks over to him and knows that he's in trouble as he's surrounded by Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish. Scott Dawson says, kiss, says, kiss my ass! And then it's hit with a high-low total elimination that the Eliminators used to do uh, in ECW, whatever you want to call it, for the victory. And just, uh, I mean, I haven't done it justice, I would say, we were talking through it there, but just what a match. I mean, talk about tag team wrestling. You can talk about the Young Bucks, you can talk about the Lucha Brothers, you can talk about the Young Bucks versus the Lucha Brothers in the matches that they had earlier this year. But this is as good a tag team wrestling match that you will see um, in terms of psychology, in terms of tag team manoeuvres, in terms of a slow start that slowly built up to a strong finish and a quick finish. This wasn't multiple spots, high spots throughout the match. This was good psychological tag team wrestling. Absolutely fantastic action. As I said, they built off slow. They cut off the ring. The Undisputed Era did cut off the ring. Focusing on Dash Wilder with a slow build to a hot finish. Just great psychology, great tag team action. Um, at tag team use, tag team strategy, and use of the tag rope. Um, that is something that's lost. At one point, they had Dash Wilder um, sort of, uh, he, uh, he attacked, uh, I think it's Kyle O'Reilly on the apron, on sort of one side of the apron. And to do the uh, uh, sort of blind tag, they do uh, they go for uh, what's it called power and glory or something like that. And um, as he's going for it, he basically the move is that Scott Dawson does a superplex, Dash Wilder does a flying splash, and he before he goes to the opposite uh, corner to do the splash, he runs to the corner and holds a tag rope before he makes a tag. Just little things like that. Little things just make it absolutely tremendous. There was a slightly nasty botch in the match where Scott Dawson goes to jump over Bobby Fish from the top rope, but Dawson's knee hits like Fish straight in the face. It looks like a nasty botch, and um, it was just a bit rough. And we did have some false finishes, which was nice. The Revival hit a shat machine on Bobby Fish, but Kyle O'Reilly sort of pulled Scott Dawson out of the ring. So the Revival did have the match won at some point. A little nice throwback as well that I thought was was fun is they had a, a sequence where there was a brain buster by Scott Dawson onto Bobby Fish for a close two count. And then the Revival actually went to do DIY's finish. Um, the sort of... Uh, kick and knee strike to the back of the head. It was a similar move they used in their 2016 takeover match versus DIY, which was quite fun and a nice throwback. So just, yeah, I thought it was a tremendous match. It was, you know, got your way of see it. If you're a fan of tag team wrestling, go and watch it. And if you're a fan of tag team wrestling and you're not a massive fan of the high spots, that might not make as much sense psychology-wise, go and watch this match. This is... This is tag team wrestling. I can't really put it any simpler than that. We then see the Viking Raiders being separated by uh, from the Forgotten Sons in the parking lot, which uh, implies that they're going to face off later on tonight. This is followed by a War Games package uh, with music by the artist Poppy, who actually 
performed on NXT a few weeks ago. It, it was fantastic. Um, they hope that it's not a friendship. They're, the team, especially Rhea Ripley's team and even Shayna Baszler's team, it's not about friendship. It's risk versus reward. They talk about making history and going to war. This is this is just a great video package. This is awesome. You know when you see a great video package because when it finishes, <laughs> the first thing you say, you go, oh, "This is this was this was great." I'm really looking forward to Saturday's match. It gets you hyped for War Games, no doubt. Um, I do think I've said it a few times now that I do think that the female War Games will be the main event of the show um, as a first ever. It probably has to go on last, and it probably has the most heat out of any angle on the show right now. I mean, it's been that heavily featured and is that historic. And I think it will have a big a big turn also with Dakota Kai, which we'll touch on a bit later. But yeah, this video package is awesome. Go back and watch it. I've, I will be completely honest, I'd never heard of Poppy before um, her appearance on NXT a few weeks ago. But this, this song's quite catchy as well. And it just fits in with the NXT War Games theme and the War Games match. Um, so yeah, really enjoyable. Go and watch it. We then have the NXT UK Women's Champion, Kaylee Ray, versus Dakota Kai. Keep your eyes on her this weekend. Uh, Kaylee Ray goes for the gory bomb, but it's actually countered into a code red by Dakota Kai. Stiff kick by Dakota Kai to Kaylee Ring, uh, Kaylee Ray on the Kaylee Ring, Kaylee Ray, excuse me, on the ring apron. Um, sounds like Kaylee Ray after this match. This was a stiff kick <laughs> talk about snug i mean i say snug i think she literally just kicked her straight in the face it was absolutely brutal kick uh kelly ray responds though by in a ser- hitting a series of kicks onto dakota kai kelly ray then attacks a surgically uh repaired knee of dakota kai uh dakota kai though responds by hitting a nice double stomp out of the corner dakota kai then throws kelly ray into the ring steps and hits another stiff kick to the face this one was absolutely and i said about the first one being stiff this one was absolutely brutal they showed a replay of it and again it just it's just a a stiff kick to the face it looked awesome um thankfully though kaylee ray wasn't injured and will be in the match this saturday back in the ring kaylee ray hits a super kick followed by the gory bomb for the victory and i see a gory bomb throw back there obviously to gory guerrero father of eddie um, Chava Guerrero used to use it quite a lot as well, uh, both senior and junior. It was nice to see the Gory Bomb again. Uh, it was a solid match. It obviously was meant to showcase Kaylee Ray for Saturday's War Games, um, but that wasn't done. Obviously, we're in the theme of the show, the Survivor Series build, so we have some more. After the match, we see Carmella from Friday Night Smackdown appearing on the apron to distract Kaylee Ray. She's moonwalking on the apron, and uh, she can moonwalk the how. <laughs> out of the apron we walks hard enough doing it on the apron it's pretty impressive uh, this then brings out the Smackdown women's roster who attracts, uh, attacks Kaylee Ray and Dakota Kai in the ring the Smackdown women's roster includes Sonya Deville Dana Brooke Mandy Rose but this brings out the NXT women's roster including the likes of Bianca Belair Tegan Knox, and the rest of the NXT women's roster but it's not just Smackdown that's invading it's Monday Night Raw it brings out Sarah Logan. Yes, remember Sarah Logan? She's still a thing on Monday Night Raw. I think she's a staple of main event nowadays. And Kyrie Sane comes out to brawl with SmackDown and NXT. Kyrie Sane hits the insane elbow. Still the best at elbow drop in the, fin- in the business right now. Um, at me. Because, I, I mean, who's got a better elbow drop than Kyrie Sane right now? I, I don't think anyone. This then leads to a stare down between Io Shirai and Kyrie Sane, which was awesome. The crowd pops huge. Um, it's become a bit of a meme on social media now. Uh, but the stare down was awesome. Uh, Io Shirai's facials are just tremendous. Really tremendous. Ever since she turned heel, her facial uh, facials of being this sort of crazed heel were just awesome. Um, but it doesn't end there. Smackdown's Nikki Cross and makes her way out, attacking everyone with a trash can lid, a black trash can lid. Um, and it was just another chaos segment, and I'm all for it. Like I said earlier, um, the Smackdown versus Raw 
invasions have been done to death, but it's different for NXT. It's, it's fresh. It hasn't been seen before, and the crowd loves it. And the, obviously, the crowd didn't expect to see any of these, uh, or they might have had an inkling after Monday that they were going to see some of these SmackDown and Raw superstars, but I don't think they were sure that they were going to see this many. Um, and the stare down, like I said, between Kairi Sane and Io Shirai was also completely awesome. The match itself, maybe slightly an afterthought. Uh, but keep your eye on Dakota Kai. I would assume there's a story that they're trying to tell there with her being left off the uh, War Games team, captained by Rhea Ripley, this Saturday. Uh, last week, obviously, was a tease that it might have been Dakota Kai that was laying out all the female superstars backstage at NXT, but it was, I'm assuming, Kaylee Ray or Bailey is the story that they are trying to tell there. But Dakota Kai, keep your eye on her. I would be surprised if she wasn't somehow featured into the match on Saturday. We next have the Raw Tag Team Champions, the Viking Raiders, versus the Forgotten Sons, Steve Cutler and Wesley Blake, accompanied to the ring by Jackson Ryder. The Viking Raiders dominate the Forgotten Sons in the early exchanges of this match. We have a three count broken up by Steve Cutler in, it must have been what, 15, 20 seconds, if that? Um, however, the Forgotten Sons do get back into the match. There's some double team offense on Eric. The Forgotten Sons then attempt to continue uh, to isolate Eric throughout the match. Jackson Ryder also distracts Ivar to allow Steve Cutler to hit a running knee on the outside. There's a springboard elevated clothesline by the Viking Raiders. Steve Cutler throws Eric into the ring post, and Steve Cutler also goes for a back crack on Ivar but falls. Uh, Ira fell quite late so the backcracker just didn't really work it looked kind of awkward commentators have had to cover on that one Ivar then power, uh, is power bombed into Steve Cutler's knees into the corner for a two count for the Forgotten Sons Eric goes to the top right but Jackson Riker hits him with a nasty forearm um, to sort of get the distraction there Steve Cutler then hits Eric for a Death Valley driver onto the edge of the ring apron. And this looked really nasty. Really nasty. The way um, we saw on Monday Night Raw uh, with the Drew McIntyre-Kevin Owens match where they had a, a Death a Valley driver on the ring apron and he hit flush and it still looked brutal, but there was obviously a lot of protection there for Kevin Owens. Whereas on this one, it, Eric just sort of barely clips right the edge of the ring apron it looked absolutely like really really brutal i'm assuming eric was fine but it looked like a nasty nasty spot the referee then throws jackson Riker out of the match for getting involved again ivar then takes out Riker with a tope suicido wesley blake then hits a frankensteiner to ivar causing him to take out both steve cutler and his partner eric in the ring which is a nice spot both teams brawl it in the ring. There was a really nice spot as well where Ivar did his trademark cartwheel, but it was also met with cartwheels from Steve Cutler and Wesley Blake. Uh, but this was followed by a handspring elbow by Ivar, which is, I mean, uh, it's almost become the norm now because we see it every Monday. But, I mean, this guy's like 300 pounds, and the way he can move, I spoke about it the other day on the watch long we did for Survivor Series 2002 about a three minute warning when I mean, you had like the likes of Jamal and Rosie flying off the top rope. Ivar's the same. If maybe if could he be even more athletic? Maybe. I mean, it's it's outrageous. Um, yeah, to sound not to sound cynical, but you sort of wonder how long can he keep it up with his can it with his body? I mean, it's got to play havoc on your joints, hasn't it? The Viking Raiders then hit the Viking experience for the victory for the Raw Tag Team Champions. Honestly, the match had no business being that good. I mean, it was a cold match. It started off cold. No heat really between them. Obviously, I know they had to pull apart earlier on in the show in the parking lot. And it appeared uh, in the opening exchanges that the Viking Raiders would win it in about 10 seconds. But after that, I mean, it just got better and better and better. I know the Forgotten Sons are a bit... Uh, you know, some of the crowd aren't really... Um, <laughs> My alarm goes off there. Uh, I know the Viking Raiders aren't really the crowd's favourite at Full Sail. And I know they're not really the fans' favourite on social media. Um, but the crowd loved it. Absolutely loved it. The Viking Raiders are one how of the tag team. Um, are they the best in the WWE right now? 
I mean, it's difficult to argue. I mean, they have to be in the conversation, don't they? Maybe not including NXT, Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly. I mean, we'll see them compete against each other at the weekend. Um, but it's got to be, it's got to be in the conversation. I mean, you could argue with like the likes of the Revival. Um, are they a better tag team? Probably the Revival, probably. But in terms of being hot right now, in terms of victories, in terms of putting on matches, I mean, the Viking Raiders have to be up there. But the Forgotten Sons did really hold their own in this match, I thought, as well. I thought it was a great showing from Steve Cutler and Wesley Blake. Um, it was just a really good match. And for all the things that happened on this week's episode of NXT, people won't talk about this match. It will sort of fly under the radar, but it's one to see. So if you do want to pick up some matches and not watch the whole episode of NXT this week, this would be a match to see. It was it was fun. It was fun. And that's the most important thing, especially with the Viking Raiders. Their matches tend to be fun. They do tend to follow the same formula. You know, you have Eric doing the ground and pound, and if anyone's going to work over a member of the Viking Raiders, it's Eric. But when Ivar gets that hot tag and he starts flying around the ring, I mean, it's something else. It's a sight to see. Um, their matches are just fun. And that's what wrestling should be sometimes. It should be fun. Um... So yeah, I, I, I enjoyed this one. Uh, we then get a promo package from Adam Cole hyping his NXT Championship match at Survivor Series against either Pete Dunne, Damian Priest or Killian Dane. I think this was needed as obviously the NXT Championship match being on Survivor Series has almost been a bit of a late addition and slightly a uh, slight afterthought. Um, but it made me think during uh, when they were throwing this promo package that I'm assuming then if we have your SmackDown and Raw announced team then we'll have your NXT announced team at Survivor Series, which if that's the case, it'll be awesome to hear Mauro Ranello calling a, um, I don't even want to call it a main roster pay-per-view anymore, but it'll be nice to see him calling, you know, a WWE pay-per-view for the first time since, uh, I mean, what's got to be Elimination Chamber 2017, uh, I believe, when he was still calling SmackDown, so that's going to be awesome. Um, I'm really happy for more Ironella. He's the best commentator in the business today and deserves as much ex exposure and success as he gets. We then have the main event, Dominic Dajakovic versus the NXT champion Adam Cole in a ladder match with the winner getting the War Games advantage for their team this Saturday at NXT TakeOver War Games. The match starts with Adam Cole working over Dajakovic early. Dajakovic then goes for the ladder, but Adam Cole... Drop kicks the ladder into Dajakovic. Uh, Dajakovic then kicks the ladder into Adam Cole and then slams the ladder across the body of the NXT champion. The ladder then, it was a quite fun spot where after the spot of slamming the um, body of Adam Cole against the, la uh, the ladder, the ladder then actually accidentally falls onto the knee of Adam Cole, who just goes with it. He just sold it really well, and I just it's just little things like that. It's the nuances that I really like with those sort of things. Uh, Cole then attacks Dajakovic's surgically repaired knee. This would be a theme throughout the match, the surgically repaired knee of Dominic Dajakovic. He was actually had a torn meniscus repaired earlier this year. Um, he wraps the knee around the ring post, but Dajakovic fights back. He goes to choke slam Adam Cole through a ladder. They had the ladder set up between one of the rungs and the ladder, and the I believe the second rope, or maybe in the top rope. Uh, but Cole hits a standing U Ushiguroshi. Um, any move that was hit on D Dajakovic this match is a bit of a side point. It's unbelievable. Dajakovic, I don't know how tall he is. He must be like, what, six, seven, six, eight? He's a tall guy. He's 270 pounds. And some of his athleticism, obviously, we said in the matches he had with Keith Lee previously, are just oh, spe spectacular. He's a spectacular athlete, Dajakovic. Adam Cole goes to climb the ladder, but then Dajakovic chokeslams Cole from the ladder onto a ladder set up in the corner of the ring for a nice spot. Dajakovic goes for the feast your eyes, but Cole counters. Um, the feast your eyes is a sort of torture rack move into a knee strike, but Cole counters and actually climbs the ladder, but Dajakovic prevents Cole from climbing it. Uh, however, Cole turns this into the most beautiful Panama Sunrise you will see he absolutely spikes Dajakovic. And like I said, Dajakovic is so athletic. I mean, Dajakovic essentially just jumps and lands on his head. I mean, uh, the Panama Sunrise, the Canadian Destroyer, whatever you want to call it, is an absolutely uh, beautiful or inspiring move anyway. But then when you see someone the size 
of Dajakovic being hit with it and just jumping on his head. It was uh, it was incredible. It was a great response from the crowd. Uh, we then see Dajakovic uh, stomp on Adam Cole. Uh, and then stop him from climbing the ladder by hitting a big knee, which uh, Dajakovic then sells as it's the surgically repaired knee that he hit. Dajakovic then climbs the ladder, but Cole meets him at the top. And then Adam Cole smashes the briefcase into the face. They had a briefcase hanging above the ring for the symbolic nature of the advantage uh, for war games. He smashed the briefcase into the face of Dajakovic. He falls off the top of the ladder. And through the ladder set up between the ladder rungs and the ring post. Uh, It wasn't a super long match. I don't think they had loads of time left. Especially for the other things they wanted to get in after this match. But it was still excellent. Still an excellent ladder match. And Cole, Adam Cole recently has been an absolute fire with his recent performances. You think of the month he's had. The matches with Seth Rollins on Raw. Daniel Bryan on SmackDown. And some of the matches he's had on NXT now. The ladder match Dominic Dajakovic. Talk about a month. Talk about a month. He's really stepped up to the plate. And not only has he stepped up to the plate, but he's got a broken hand, broken wrist um, at the moment. So it's just been absolutely... He is NXT at the moment. He is the guy on NXT. And you hear the compliments that the likes of Triple H and Shawn Michaels paid to him. They know what they've got in Adam Cole. And he's definitely the guy to carry NXT on his back at the moment. It almost makes uh, it more brutal to see a ladder match in such a confined arena that you have at full sail. Um, the hits, the strikes, the bumps through the ladders just have that extra sting to it. With it being such a confined space, sometimes the noise can get lost in a large arena. But post-match, we're not done here. Out come the remaining members of the Undisputed Era to clap Adam Cole for his victory and give them the advantage this Saturday at War Games. But they're met by the members of the SmackDown roster we saw earlier in the show, those being Cesaro, Intercontinental Champion Shinsuke Nakamura and The Revival. But behind the uh, Undisputed Era from NXT, we see members of the Raw roster, the Raw Tag Team Champions, the Viking Raiders, the Street Profits, and Zack Ryder representing Raw. That's right, Zack Ryder. You're all fucking dead now. Yeah, you all fucked up. Zack Ryder's here. Okay? They might as well just cut the show now. Zack Ryder's going to kick your ass. Apparently, you must be fully recovered from the attack by AOP on Monday and medically cleared to brawl at full sail. Kayfabe is dead, my friends. Absolutely dead. This then leads to a Raw versus NXT versus SmackDown brawl at ringside. But then in the ring, shockingly, appears Drew McIntyre and he hits a beautiful Claymore kick on Dominic Dajakovic. And then tells the cam to suck it, which was nice of him. Nice throw to Triple H there. Claymore kick, by the way. One of my favourite finishers in professional wrestling at the moment. It's absolutely awesome. Especially when you see someone the size of Drew McIntyre do it. But then we're talking the size. This brings in Keith Lee, who enters the ring. Keith Lee versus Drew McIntyre. That's a match I want to see. Uh, hopefully we can see that match one day. Keith Lee, who has grown on me every single time I see him. He is just... I wasn't sold on him when I first saw him. I'll be honest, I hadn't seen a lot of him. I hadn't seen his work in Evolve. But you just watched him in the ring a couple of times, and he's just, oh, he's phenomenal. He then hits the spirit bomb, he being Keith Lee, pronouns pow. A set-out power bomb onto Drew McIntyre. This then leads Keith Lee and Ivar of the Viking Raiders to stare off, and they hit, both hit jumping dives, wiping out the Raw, NXT, and SmackDown roster, which then leaves one man standing in the ring, that man being the NXT champion, Adam Cole. They talk about Cole being the last man standing. Not so fast, though, because suddenly, out of nowhere, you see the guy who is the lightning rod of WWE at the moment, Seth Rollins, appearing in the ring. He super kicks Adam Cole and is loudly, I would say, majority, majority, majority. <laughs> I'm making up words here. It is early in the morning. Uh, is loudly booed. By the Full Sail University crowd. So he manages to get the burn it down chance though. Through setting up his stomp. But these chants bring out Tommaso Ciampa. Who teases going into the ring. But then actually kicks Adam Cole in the face. Which I liked. You know it's not all about Survivor Series. Obviously it's a big deal being NXT. Being involved in Survivor Series. It's not all about Survivor Series. We still have a takeover match. Um, and Adam Cole uh, is still opposite. Uh, team captains of war games with Tommaso Ciampa and Tommaso Ciampa still wants his NXT championship back 
So it would make sense for him to kick Adam Cole in the face, and he does it. So I like that. Little subtle, subtle things there. Um, we then get loud chants of Seth's not cool. Seth's not cool. We'll give him something to tweet about for sure. Maybe you should follow CM Punk's advice to stay off of Twitter. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa and then Rollins brawl in the ring to end the show. Which was a fun ending. Um, like I said, I enjoyed the SmackDown and Raw invasion this week. They had some big stars on the show. Um, when I recorded the uh, AEW Dynamite review earlier, we didn't have the ratings in. But this week, uh, we actually have the first NXT ratings victory over AEW for the first time in eight weeks. Um, I were, I was slightly surprised, not totally surprised, slightly surprised. Obviously, in my prediction, I said that I thought AEW would still get the victory. They didn't. Uh, NXT brought in, I believe, over 900,000 uh, viewers, whereas uh, AEW brought in, I believe, like 893,000. So it was still within... 10 20,000 viewers, but NXT gets the victory. Um, not as I said, I predicted that I thought AEW would nick it, but it's not totally surprising. This was a loaded, loaded uh, NXT show with uh, superstars of both Raw and SmackDown appearing. Main, I nearly said main roster stars there, I catch myself, but with the likes of Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch appearing. WWE would hope. I mean, they're, they're arguably some of their biggest stars at the moment that they would draw a big rating or a larger rating than AEW, and they did. And obviously, heading into uh, Takeover and Survivor Series, you would hope. Like I said, if there was any week they were going to be AEW, be this week. So, that's good for NXT. The big test will be if they can sustain it. They got the victory this week. Can they get a victory when it's back just to be in the NXT stars? I'm assuming the likes of the Raw and SmackDown stars aren't going to appear anymore on NXT because there's no reason in storyline for them to appear. So when it's just uh, NXT stars appearing um, against the AEW stars on over on TNT on Dynamite, we'll see um, if they can sustain it. But it, it was nice just to get them on the board. I think this narrative of AEW just completely wiping out NXT isn't... Um, you like to see a war being competitive. You won't call it a war. Well, let's call it a war. Um, but you like to see something competitive. It's nice. always nice to see uh, shows trading victories as opposed to one team completely dominating. So I'm all for it. Um, congratulations to NXT. And we will see if they can continue it. Anyway, let's go on to your opinions. NXT in three words. At the end of every episode of NXT, we send out a Twitter post to our official Twitter account at 365Wrestle. Be sure to give us a follow. Uh, asking our followers to describe NXT in three words. Let's take a look and see what you, our great followers, thought of tonight's episode of NXT. We have Hazard Drew says, Main roster ruins. Um, I think they're referring to that you have the sort of main roster stars like the likes of Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch and uh, Cesaro and Ricochet all appearing tonight, all and the revival, of course. And uh, just in that NXT setting, that sort of less cartoony, stupid, dumb WWE corporate setting, they just seem so much better and so much freer. Obviously, I know NXT is still heavily scripted, but um, it's taken a lot more seriously. And the storylines are a lot more serious than the likes you will see in uh, WWE. And it's just refreshing to see them um, presented and highlighted in such a... I mean, NXT, talk about a sports-centric show. Um, the most sports-centric show probably is NXT at the moment in WWE, isn't it? Um, so I can understand that. But then people can say it's just about adjusting to the main roster. And NXT is the main roster, of course. We then see uh, Love Mixer 5 say the a show um obviously smackdown hasn't yet been broadcast this week but i think it's a safe bet that most likely nxt probably is the a show this week we then have music addict 512 say amazing wrestling matches um hard to argue <laughs> hard to argue this week we've got hi i love wwe says better than aew um again probably probably hard to argue this week, I mean, 
They were two absolutely fantastic shows. I really enjoyed Dynamite this week. In comparison, probably NXT did nick it this week in terms of the quality of the show. Like I said, it was a stacked NXT show, uh, a great NXT show and a fun NXT show. It will just be a case of whether they can sustain it next week. Pete Burns underscore uh, Pete underscore Burns thirteen says didn't watch it, so he might not show what the uh, all the fuss is about. AJM ninety four X says the best ever. Obviously, they're a big fan of tonight's episode. Is it the best episode of NXT ever? I'm not sure about that one, but it's a big statement. But obviously, they enjoyed the show. Undertaker013 says, freaking damn fun. Sounds like AJ Styles there, but it was fun. Absolutely. It was a really fun show. And I think that's the most important thing for NXT. Um, If you want to, obviously, and it's the formula that's worked this week. If you want to have a show that's going to be AEW, make it fun. You know, and and both shows are fun, to be fair, NXT and AEW. Um, they're my favourite night of the wrestling week at the moment. Um, that's not that hard, really, is it? Pinto Beans 20 says the main roster. Hard to argue. We then have a tweet from Director AMD, which he says, called up too soon. Um, I, th- I, I would agree with that one. I would agree with that one. Um, there sometimes is this... Or in part in the past, I'm not sure as much now, considering that NXT is considered a third brand and not developmental. But some stars are just called up too quickly to the main roster, and it's hurt them a lot. I mean, do we need to even go on about someone like EC3? Um, but the likes of uh, Ricochet, perhaps, called up too soon. Uh, definitely the likes of people like Zack Ryder. I mean, obviously, I know they're not called up too soon, but they could just they they should be in like in NXT. There's nothing for them up there in the main roster. Um, sorry, I catch myself again on Raw or SmackDown. So I would I would agree. There is definitely a group of people that have been caught up way too soon. Apollo Crews uh, definitely been caught up too soon. And in the likes of uh, Finn Balor, who get called up when obviously when they were ready, but they want to go back because they hate it up there. So there you go. CDP oh CD Piglet, excuse me. So it's really fucking badass. So I'll give you that one. Jesse McGee underscore says desperate for I'm um, they say desperate for ranting, but I'm assuming they mean desperate for rating. Uh, they probably were desperate for rating. I mean they'd lost for seven weeks in a row. Uh they loaded this show. They told you on Monday to tune into NXT because you're gonna see people from Raw and SmackDown. And you would like to think going into a takeover and going into Survivor Series against the AEW show that isn't going into anything. The pay for you next pay for you is sometime after the next big event is Bash at the Beach in January of 2020, that they would get a big rating. So why not load the wagon, as Jim Ross would say for this show. Um, so they, yeah, they were desperate for a rating. They were desperate for a win. Um, now, this was a bit of a controversial one. No One Man 5 says, Great. Zero Vince. Now, this is get a bit of controversy um, on our social media because a lot of people said there's still Vince involved in NXT. From what I understand, Vince's involvement is minimal. He's focusing on Raw, SmackDown, and uh, the XFL, even though if that's going to still be a thing. So, I uh, I would say zero. I wouldn't say completely zero. Vince is WWE after all, but um, especially with the Survivor Series tie-in. But yeah. It, you can tell it's it's less Vince, and it's refreshing. It really, it really is refreshing. But what did you think of the show? Uh, the people who haven't responded to us on Twitter, let us know your thoughts on tonight's episode of NXT in the comments section below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once we get to that magic number of one thousand subscribers, we'll be able to do live reviews of every show, and really get our great followers more involved in our reviews. So hit that subscribe button. And get us to 1,000. Thank you very much. Don't forget, you can follow Wrestling News 365 on all of our social media platforms on the screen right now. Twitter, at 365 Wrestle. Facebook, at Wrestling News 365. Instagram, at Wrestling News 365. Storyfire. Oh, what the handle? what's the handle going to be? What's that? Oh, yeah, you guessed it right. Wrestling News 365. You'll be uploading exclusive content to our Storyfire channel every Saturday and Sunday. So be sure to subscribe over there to not miss any of the action that you won't be able to find anywhere else. My aim is actually to record both our Storyfire exclusives uh, today. 
and we have some really exciting things planned for that platform so be sure to download the story our app and subscribe you can also visit our website though wrestlenews365.com that's wrestlenews365.com for all the very latest news reviews uh, exclusive series and much more you can also support wrestlenews365 by purchasing our merchandise, visit wn365.com. That's wn365.com for all our merch and apparel. Uh, there's going to be some newer designs coming soon. So make sure you visit the website and take a look to see if anything tickles your fancy over there. If you do purchase an item, be sure to post it on our social media so we can share it with all of our followers. We really do appreciate all your support. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or however you've come across this video today. We really appreciate it, and we'll speak with you again soon.